Be, because it, there's a big difference in going up and playing classic White Lion songs and then presenting new White Lion songs when White Lion isn't there. Because, mm -hmm. you know, the sound of White Lion when it came to songwriting was Vita Brada and My Tramp. Mm -hmm. And that can't be changed. And that will never happen again. So I am not desperate in that way mm -hmm. that, um, that I just find somebody else and then write some songs. I did that once with an album called Return of the Pride. And I really love the album, but it's just not the sound of White Lion. So whenever I play White Lion, I just want to play the old songs. Mm -hmm. And that, that'll be more like just like a live show to, to entertain and, and, and enjoy that. You said that you actually had some regret about Return of the Pride. When did the regret kick in? Because it got good reviews. I think a lot of your fans liked it and they thought it was reminiscent of the original sound. Well, I appreciate, appreciate what you're saying there. It's, it's just when I look back about it, it's just, you know, I never really wanted to record under the name White Lion again. And um, because so much of the sound and the songwriting came between Vito and I, it's a different story being up there playing the old songs note for note, but writing new material in, 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 uh, in 2012 with, you know, keeping in mind that the band came from the 1983-84 when we started up and then having to jump back there and develop that sound that existed that because the band has not, has not grown because the band ended in 91 and then all those years um, and and I just really do think that it, it, it's, it's important that uh, that you reflect uh, how you feel this is not making a new Star Wars movie where there's already a concept <laughs> mm -hmm. and you know the actors and, and the characters have to be certain, certain uh, within certain you know perimeters. You know, writing a new album is not sitting and baking bread. It, it's like the idea has to come to you, and that works well when it's Mike Tram writing an album and, and, and I'm writing new songs. But White Line has restrictions. It's it's known for an image. It's known for for a sound and so on and so. On. So you have to you're limited already, and that's that's tough when you go in to do that. And I don't want to be that as a songwriter. Because then it becomes like a prefabricated product. Then you then you get Kiss, and that's not what I want to do with, mm -hmm. in this case. Mm -hmm. yeah, last question. We'll go to another song. But um, doing some research for, for, for this interview, the picture that was painted of Vito was someone who um, is sitting back and, and maybe um, you know it keeps making legal threats every time you use the name, but doesn't want to do anything. He must be a multi-millionaire if he can afford to sit back and do nothing. I mean, well, what? what why has that situation arisen? Why has it arisen in your, your mind? I don't think he's a multimillionaire uh, <laughs> by any means. Uh, the man has not stood on a stage, written a song or recorded a song, done an interview since, since the 90s, or since 91. Mm -hmm. um, I really cannot speak about his behavior. He chooses to do what he chooses to do. Mm -hmm. I choose to live. Mm -hmm. 